Do you not have a variable capacitor, especially an air-spaced one, best for antenna couplers? Or maybe you don't have any ferrite toroids. Don't worry, even if you've got only basic salvage parts, you can put together an L-match antenna coupler like this. It's particularly suitable for use on higher HF bands. The widest range of L-match antenna couplers have both a variable inductance and a variable capacitance. But if you're willing to use it only on a few bands with a certain length of wire, then you can skimp on that and make only one part, either the inductor or the capacitor, fully variable. That's what I've done here. It's an L-match antenna coupler, especially designed for higher HF bands, with a 7.1 metre length of wire. A lot of people talk about resonant antennas as if they are necessary to give good DX performance. That is not so, especially on the higher HF bands. If you've got a half wavelength vertical on 15 metres, or 21 megahertz, then it will have high impedance, so you will need some form of matching unit, some form of transformer, or as I use, an L-match like this. That will comprise an inductor and a capacitance. If you want it to operate on bands either side, like 24 or 18 megahertz, then you can leave one of them fixed and just vary the other part. It doesn't matter, you can have a fixed inductor and variable capacitance all the other way around. How did I do the variable inductance? You might be able to see this is a syringe type device. I've wound some wire on it, 10 turns, it is solid wire, it's insulated. This is about 12 millimeters diameter and that by itself gives you about one microhenry. This tube is the same diameter as a piece of ferrite rod. This is from an old transistor radio and it's been cut to be a bit shorter and you might be able to see I've just put as a handle some plastic tubing on the end. I think it's irrigation tubing. Anyway, that slides in and when it's slid in, the inductance increases up to about four microhenry at maximum. So you can get any value between one and four microhenry. If you just had one capacitor, I'd suggest 27 picofarad a prototype of this did use 27 picofarad then that is just right for 21 18 and 24 megahertz there are however times on other bands where you might want a higher capacitance value what I've done here is I've got two capacitors of 47 picofarad in series and if I want the 47 picofarad then I close the switch uh, the switch you can see just here or if I want 23 picofarad then I open the switch so the two capacitors are in series if you just want to build this for 18 21 and 24 megahertz and you have a 27 picofarad capacitor as that's near enough to 23 then you don't need the switch you just need one capacitor, 27 picofarad from here to here. Now, 7.1 meters, not only is it near enough to a half wave on 21 megahertz, but it's also a quarter wave on 10 megahertz. So you could use this same antenna and same coupler for 10 megahertz as well. Uh, the capacitors here don't matter so much for that. Uh, you may need the inductance, you just uh, may need to vary it a bit. But anyway, 
even without this coupler, it's very close to being a quarter wavelength on 30 meters or 10 megahertz. You do, however, need to, if you want the maximum efficiency, you might want to add some radials. Uh, that's more important when the radiating element is only a quarter wavelength versus half wavelength where you can get away with just a short counterpoise like this. This is particularly optimum for 18, 24 and 21 megahertz. So especially if you're operating portable during the day, then a matching unit like this and just over seven meters of wire would be absolutely perfect. And with seven meters of wire, you could just have an eight or nine meter pole, stick that in the ground and especially if you're on the beach, then that can give you quite good results as a vertical antenna. And for lower HF bands, then uh, do a bit more with counterpoises, and this will work on 7 and 10 megahertz as well. As for this box, well, it's just an old computer speaker. I should do something about making a cap here to protect it. If you did have a variable capacitor and wanted to dispense with the ferrite going in and out, then try a value of around one to half to two microhenry. The variable capacitor might be say 10 to 100 picofarad, and that should work again, 18, 21, 24 megahertz, and possibly some other bands. Does this antenna coupler match on various HF bands just with just over seven meters of wire? Well, it's good on the higher HF bands, 18 megahertz and up. Um, mostly 23 picofarad, although I did need 47 picofarad on 28 megahertz. 10 megahertz, this time operating as a quarter wavelength vertical was, was good. Note though that just because I've got a good match doesn't necessarily mean the performance will be fantastic. Not having much of a radial real limit performance on 10 megahertz. Seven megahertz was okay, uh, especially um, uh, the SSB part of the band, not so good at the CW end of the band. 14 megahertz was really poor. Definitely needed a different inductance and capacitor combination 14 megahertz or if you were to add say two or three meters of wire if your pole is long enough that would make it a half wavelength on 14 megahertz that would be okay or you could go the other way with only five meters of wire make it a quarter wavelength so it is an important band this combination doesn't quite work on 14 megahertz as well as it might but still you've got a good selection of bands which especially at this stage of the solar cycle especially if you're operating during the day uh, this antenna should be a good performer with this l match coupler what i did find with seven megahertz was when i made contact with the aluminium angle that i'm using to hold the pole in that did improve the match so definitely wise to have a small alligator clip on here that you can clip onto this or preferably some wire radials yeah vk2 way vk2 way good day uh, peter good to hear you there five and two here five and two i'm receiving you five by five most of the time it's takes up a little bit uh, yeah good signal uh, from you and if you need another score vk5 xa echo five by five over Peter, I've got your five and six. Uh, you're about a three and one. Sir, 
31 to me. Uh, just up and down in the conditions. Uh, just got you in there, over. Wonderful, VK3 Yankee Echo. Thanks for the five and seven. Uh, you're three and one. Three and one, over. Okay, I think there's a 7 there, a 7, uh, QRZ, QRZ, VK3YE Portable. Total of 20 contacts, mix of SSB and later on FT8. So that's our look at a super simple L-match antenna coupler. It won't cover as wide a range as some of the others I've described, but a benefit of this is that you don't need a variable capacitor. Um, you can just use switched fixed capacitors and you can get some range with this variable inductance. I haven't tried it with 100 watts, but it may well be suitable for a bit more than QRP, especially if you've got good voltage ratings for the fixed capacitors. Roger, roger. You are 5.9 and running 5 watts. 5 watts QRP, over. Okay, great job for 5 watts and uh, 72 seconds for the call. I am QRP 5 watts, 73. No, 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 no QRP, no QRP. 